Hey, I'm Nick, and welcome to our session today. Today we're talking about priorities. I've been seeing a lot of comments in our Facebook user group and even some questions on our Facebook posts uh, and some emails I've been getting from some customers about how to use the priority page. And it seems like a lot of people are putting a lot of pressure on themselves to fill up that page and make sure there's something in there for every priority and that every priority has to get done today. And if they don't, they feel bad about it and they're judging themselves and there's a lot of pressure. And that's not the intent of Define My Day. Define My Day is a way to help you get more awareness of where we invest our time um, and where what pulls us off track. Uh, we want to use Define My Day to develop that intention and that focus on what's really important. And part of it is making mistakes and then realizing, you know, I put a lot of time here today it took me away from, from what I really wanted to be doing or I thought I wanted to be doing this and I need to go another direction. So the, look, there's a big, a big page here, right? Our goal is not to fill in every line. Our goal is not to, 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 to fill this up and just make it look really busy. There was one post we made on Sunday where priority number one was the only priority and it was, uh, I think it was football game or something like that. And that can be it. You know, if you, if you have um, something to do with your friends, if you're going out, if you need to pay attention to your family, if you need to pay attention to your loved one, if you need to pay attention to your parents, whatever is most important that day, there may not be anything else, and that's okay. So I want to go through some strategies with you. Uh, I, have a, I set up a little, uh, little uh, post-it board back here, and I'm going to show you some strategies and try to help you out through this process. And we'll come back to this book in a minute. So... Um, in the meantime, uh, while you're on here with me, please uh, ask any questions. If, if you have them, leave them in the comments. Ask them as you think of them, and I'll come back and go read through, read through the questions. So I'm going to look right now and see if we have anything going on here, uh, if we have any comments. Yeah. And, oh, don't want to hear myself talking. Um, all right, so we are good to go. All right, good. Um, so I'm going to go to the board, and I'm going to start talking about uh, kind of like the whole process with the priorities here and help you out with that. Okay, so look, the main goal with Define My Day, and I wanna make sure I can see, you can see everything, okay, good. So the main goal with Define My Day, um, we are, like, if this is our life right here, right? Well, this, is, this is everything that encompasses uh, the things that we touch, right? And the thing, the activities that we need to do. And you know we have we we might want to go this direction, right? This is where this is where we want to be, right? So that's 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 our ultimate goal. We want to be this person. That person might be a good parent. That person might be a good employee. That might be trustworthy. Um, maybe it involves money. Maybe you're rich. Maybe you can afford to buy your parents a, a, a retirement home. Maybe you can afford to pay your kids' way through college. Maybe you're beyond that. Maybe you just want to be able to retire comfortably yourself. Uh, whatever this looks like, wherever you want to go out here, we, you know, we have to drag all of this stuff with us. The purpose of Define My Day is to minimize going directions that have nothing to do with getting there. So if something's pulling us this direction, we want, we want to just say, you know what, that's, that's not the direction that I want to go. I'm not going to do that out of obligation or any other reason that we feel we need to do this because we want to make other people happy, because we feel like we're obligated to do it, um, because we think it might be interesting. When you have clarity on where you want to go and you can bring your daily activities in touch with this, then we avoid these things. And what happens is when we keep going after all of this stuff that's in the opposite direction, this circle gets really big and it gets really hard to move. And it feels like when you wake up in the morning, you're just going in a million different directions. You have so many things in your head. It's hard to prioritize them. So you're just bang, 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 bang. You're just trying to do everything, right? And then at the end of the day, when, you, when you're putting your head down, you're like, oh my God, I didn't do anything. I need to do so much more tomorrow and the rest of this week and the rest of this month. When is it ever going to end? Never is the answer. Unless we take time to focus on the activities that we need to accomplish so that we can get here. And in the end, we want to make this circle much smaller. We want to make it, this. obviously the boundaries are much more defined too, right? So we want to make this much smaller 
and go in that one direction to get here, right? We want to get there. So don't spread yourself too thin. Focus on what needs to happen today and go that direction. Now, that doesn't mean we're not going to make a mistake, hit a brick wall, and decide, you know what, that's not the direction I want to go. I need to get back over here. That's okay. That's perfectly okay. That's how we figure out what we enjoy, what we don't enjoy. And we can even get clarity on where we want to go. We might decide we want to go over here. So we can say, okay, you know what? I don't like this direction anymore. I want to go this way. But the only way we do that is by intentionally setting our activities for today, our priorities, as in accordance with the goals that we have. And then we can say, you know what? I, I'm maybe not enjoying this as much as I would, or my life changed, circumstances changed, so I'm going to change direction. Then we're thinking about it. Then we're actually making a plan. But if we're just like one day waking up and just doing everything that's coming at us and taking care of everything that's coming at us, it almost feels good at the time because we're getting things done, but we're getting things done not in the direction that we want to go. So as we approach it with Define My Day to that daily page, So we have priority number one, and then we have task one, task two, and task three. This doesn't mean you always have to have three tasks for every priority. On Sunday, one of our examples that we posted on, Insta, uh, on social media was football. And this was basically the only thing going on today is, and I, I actually took this from my own example because my dad was in town from out of town. There was nothing else to do that day but watch football with dad and my kids and my brother. So that's it. Priority number one was football. Task one could be, you know, if you have things to get ready for it. You know, if you have to buy food, if you have to cook food, if you have to uh, whatever. Uh, but task number one could just be be present. It could be, um, you know, let things slide. You know, if you have somebody in the family that always kind of says something that kind of picks at you, whatever, right? So that's, that was my example for this week. And that's okay. Doesn't need to have anything else in that, another task or anything. That's it. Today I'm just going to enjoy football. However, let's just say we do. So let's go priority number two. Then we have task one, task two, task three. And I don't think you can see that. We might be below. Yeah, we are. All right. So listen, priority number two can be something completely different. It can be, you know, maybe after the game we have, you know, we want to clean up the house. So we say clean up. And then we say kitchen, dishes, and then we say family room, right? Because that's where we that's where we all hung out. Maybe there's maybe it could you could split that up with um, you know kitchen and dishes are together. Maybe you have backyard. Maybe you have to rake the leaves. Um, but however you want to do it, you know, you can divide it that way if you like. Now let's get a little bit more serious with this and talk about something that might happen during the week. Then some people like to make their priorities categories. And this is actually, uh, if, if you want, if you're trying to develop a, a good, healthy routine, a repeatable routine where you're doing the same things every day, uh, we use our disciplines for that a lot of times. So on another page in the book, we have daily disciplines to build better, better habits, right? So exercise, eating well, drinking good water. Uh, some people pray every morning. Uh, some people um, you know, do little things like, you know, floss my teeth every night just to remember, just to make that a health, a healthy habit. Um, I put, take supplements on there because there's supplements that I want to take every day and I sometimes forget. Um, but so let's say if you want to go the category method with, uh, making your priorities. So priority number one could always be family, right? So you always have family be number one. Other people put God as number one. It could be whatever is for you, right? We're not here to judge anybody. If somebody wants to make family number one, somebody wants to make work number one, that can happen today, right? So, you know, if you have a particularly hard work project going on and work needs to be number one, then work can be number one, right? As long as we're aware of how we feel about that and we're okay with it, then fine. We're not here to judge anybody, right? including ourselves. Like if sometimes we just need to do what we need to do. So priority number one, family. Priority number two can be work. And priority number three can be me. This doesn't mean I am the last priority in my life. 
This is just the order that we wrote them down. So it's a common comment we see on our examples is that, well, how can you, you can't put yourself number third, or you can't put the kids number three. We're not saying that that's the third priority in our values in life in general. That's just the way things need to happen right now. So today, say this is a Saturday, today my family is most important. It's not that they're not important on a weekday, but on a weekday I'm going to get fired if I don't go to work. So I need to wake up in the morning and go to work and do my job well. So on a weekday, work is number one. Today, family is number one, and, you know, that's it. And so uh, how family could be, it could be, again, be present. It could be be mindful. It could be um, be engaged. It could be specific activities. Go to the museum. It could be go outside. It could be go to the pool. It could be uh, help the kids with homework. It could be help mom at the nursing home. Um, it just depends on where you are and where your priorities are. And again, it doesn't mean that they're in this order. We can put them in that order. It doesn't mean it has to be that order. Another example with this, let's say if, uh, if priority number one is work, and we'll even go more specific with a work project, right? And we want to then break that project down into the three things that we need to get done today. So say the uh, say it's a we'll just use a presentation for as an example because a lot of people do presentations right but it could be sales calls so uh, we'll say project number one priority number one is our is our uh, sales pres or our marketing presentation so first we have to uh, create the outline so we're gonna just write down outline and again you can get as specific as you want however the steps you need to be it might be block off time in my schedule and tell everybody that I'm not available. And then task number two might be the outline. Now say we want to get the outline done. Task number two is uh, review uh, with boss, right? Or supervisor, whatever you call him or her. So we're going to review that outline, make sure it's something acceptable and what they want. And then number three might be, um, you know, begin the... Uh, you know, begin uh, writing out the, the, the slides, like uh, creating slides, right? Slides. Now, uh, say you're in sales. Say priority number two is sales calls. And then task one is going to be um, download a list. So you're getting a new contact list. Uh, task number two is make 50 calls. So whatever happens today, I'm going to make 50 phone calls. And then task number three would be follow up on three or with three customers, right? So this is really defined and really specific about what we want to accomplish today. I'm going to download a new list wherever you get that. Uh, I'm going to make 50 calls. So my priority today is to make 50 calls. If you're saying that's a priority, we don't want to do anything else before we get done with those 50 calls. So anything else that happens in the day, and, and this is kind of, sales is nice and easy because it's, you can don't directly relate it to income and all this other stuff. So if we have goals all the way out here, like I showed you before, if we don't make those 50 calls, we're probably not going to reach our sales goal. We're not going to reach our income goal. We're not going to get the house we want. We're not going to be able to provide for our families the way that we intend. So the reason that we make this number a priority and not making sales a priority because we know the sales come when you make the 50 calls, right? Um, same thing with the project. Like the project could be the goal and completing the project is the goal. But we know we can't get the completed project without doing these things. We have a million other things to do in a day. We have phone calls coming in. We have things to worry about at home. We have things to worry about personally, but a lot of times we focus on all the easier stuff. We focus on grocery shopping. We focus on buying birthday gifts or Christmas gifts. We focus on, you know, all the things that kind of need to happen, but are more to-do listy items uh, instead of doing these things that actually have a really, really strong impact on our lives, right? If we, if we do all our to-do list items, but don't do these things, things start falling apart. If we don't focus on our family when it's appropriate to focus on the family, then our relationships fall apart. And how many times have we created a family day 
but we sit on our phones like this nonstop, right? And we're not focusing on that relationship. And then five years down the road, you're wondering why your son or daughter won't talk to you, your parents don't talk to you, or your wife or husband won't talk to you anymore, right? Or somebody wants a divorce, or, or just your friends uh, don't call anymore. You know, like there, there are little things that happen every day because we, we allow ourselves to be intruded upon, right? So we set these intentions, not because we want to have to babysit ourselves, but because we want to think back, like if we write this down in five minutes every morning, we can think back to ourselves, you know what, I, I, right now I'm catching myself on my phone too long and this person's trying to talk to me or we're sitting in the car, you know, maybe I should stop and have a conversation, right? It's just that, that little, that little, little thing you're giving yourself right now to focus on what you need to focus on. And in specific situations like this at work, you know, when somebody comes in, it might even be your boss and says, hey, can you do this? And you say, actually, Carl, uh, I have to make 50 phone calls today. I'm not going to hit my sales number if I don't make these 50 calls. Do you mind if I just do that thing tomorrow or can you give it to somebody else? That response is a lot easier when you are well connected to what your priority is today. And your boss is going to turn around and say, you know what? Yeah, you're right. Your job right now is to make these calls or your job is to get this project done. So I understand. Look, I gotta get, I, I'll get somebody else on this for you, right? And this might be really hard, especially if, if, if you're not in the habit of getting these things done and your persona is one that you, you seem busy, but things don't always get done all the time, you know, like because we're spread way too thin, right? So when you start focusing on this stuff, people are going to go, well, okay, but are you really going to get this done? And you have to prove that you can, right? And it happened with me with customers, right? So, you know, we always told customers, you know, customers always write, and this is in my other business, but customers always write, uh, yeah, sure, we can do that. Can you do this? Yeah, sure, we can do that. And we, we did a lot of stuff. But what happened was the main deliverable we were selling suffered. And that's what they were grading us on. So we did all of this stuff, but when that one deliverable suffers, then they're grading us on that and we don't look so good. And it takes a long time to get there, but that's what happens. So you want to, if in, especially in a case of work, you, know, you want to show that this is my priority and if you have to justify it to a boss, this is my priority and this is what I need to get done. Now, if you're a business owner, business owners have a lot of temptation too, right? Business owners have that temptation to handle all of these things that we need to do. And we could probably do a, 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 a whole nother session just on priorities for business owners. But, you know, entrepreneurs, uh, individuals, what I've found is that you feel like you can um, go on Instagram, go on Facebook, you need to do um, marketing, you need to do videos, you need to do, uh, you know, calls, you know, whatever you, what, all these things. But what I found is if you can decide on what those the, the most meaningful activities are and just focus on those activities, then you'll have a lot more progress and a lot more success than if you would have tried to do everything and wear yourself out. So you do one specific thing. Our goal with Define My Day is to help people whittle this down, go from here to here, right? And then get to where they want to go. And I'm going to do a star now where I can, I can stand and do it. Um, but the, to go from the spread too thin circle to this defined circle that gets them to where they want to go. That's our mission with Define Life. And what I found was Define My Day was the best thing to focus on to get people started, right? It's the tool to get people started. And even when I focus on Define My Day, there's a lot of things we can do with Define My Day, right? There's a, we can throw it on Amazon. We can throw it on Facebook. We can throw. We can have our own website. We can we can uh, do live calls. We can do this. We can do that. And there's all these things we can do, but you have to do the few things right. We can and we can even make the product different. We can do all different versions of the product. But the bottom line is the goal is to do one or two things really really well, and that's it. And then once that's nailed down, then we can move on to something else. So don't try to spread yourself too thin. Try to whittle it down and get to this, this, this doing a couple things efficiently. Now, when we have a situation like now where we have the holidays, right? So we have, you know, we have family members coming into town. We might be traveling. We have gifts we have to buy. 
we have sales going on all the time, so we're always like looking for sales, and and, and people want to watch Christmas movies, and there's light up night, and there's a lot going on, right? We have parties, ugly sweater parties, we have all this stuff going on, and we, you can feel it's distracting you, right? It's trying to make you expand your bubble, and I think that we have to allow for that to happen. We have to understand that we're in a season right now, the holiday season, where there's a lot going on. And we're not always going to be able to focus on work. And I think people get frustrated with it because, especially if you have a habit of being a hard worker, if you, if you are incredibly efficient and get a lot done, what happens is you have your priority one, priority two, priority three. Oops, I'm going to beat. Um, priority three. And you're writing all these things down and you're used to having a bunch of tasks and you're used to checking them off and you're being efficient. But now you're finding that you can't. For one, you're out of focus. Two, you're tired. Three, there's other people aren't working as efficiently because they're doing their thing and maybe you're not getting the support you need. And I think you have to allow for that. And that doesn't mean you stop writing things down. Maybe you do. But what it can also mean is that you write them down and then at the end of the day, when you're reviewing things, you can say, well, I didn't get priority number two done because, you know, I couldn't get a phone call back from somebody who must have been out of the office. Um, because I couldn't maintain focus because, um, I was up late last night at a party for, you know, Susan, right? And, um, you know, so what do we do about that? The question is, what do we do about that? If I can't get a hold of somebody, is there somebody else I can get a hold of, right? Or maybe I just let it go. Um, or I keep calling, you know, we just, we just, we change our activity, right? If we're tired, well, then what can we do about that? Can, is there something we can do to go to bed early? What's our schedule look like? Can we make up time in the coming week? Uh, how can we get more efficient, more rested with our time? Again, the answer might be, I'm just going to have to relax a little bit. These next couple of weeks are going to be hard. And, you know, that, but that awareness is what we're striving for. It's not that we're trying to pack more in or get more done. The goal is to be aware of where our energy and time are going and understand kind of the flow of life and how we want to act with it, right? And set our intention with that. Now, um, with this, uh, you know, a lot of the times we find that people, even during the workday, feel pressured to put something in every space, right? They want three priorities and three press three tasks for each priority because the lines are there. Uh, I want to stress that that is not necessary. There are many days in your life when there should be one priority. And that priority may be getting this one project done, or it might just be family, or it might be football, like in our first example. You don't have to fill in every line. That's just absolutely not necessary. The lines are there, so you can if you need to, but it's not mandatory. The other thing is this, a lot of people say, there's not enough space for me to write all my priorities. And I would argue that if you have more than two or three priorities, that's not a priority list, that's a to-do list. And if it's a to-do list, then I guarantee, I guarantee your life looks like this. And you're going this way, you're going this way, you're going this way, and you're going this way. And you're gonna be frustrated, and you're gonna be stressed out, and eventually, you're going to get down the line and you're going to be really ha unhappy and wonder where all the time went and why you didn't spend it with the person that means the most to you or the people that mean the most to you or why you didn't take that trip to Italy or whatever you wanted to do. You're going to be exhausted. My challenge to you is to write down all of the things that you're trying to pack into this day. Write all them down and schedule them out in however long you have in your day and try to make them fit. And if you think you can make them fit, try to accomplish them all in that day within those boxes that you create. So you have, if you, if you write this down and say, well, I'm going to do this from nine to 11, I'm going to do this from 11 to 1130 and just go through your just block off every moment you have during the day. And I think what you're going to find, especially over the course of a couple days, is that you can't get to two thirds of it. It's, it's almost impossible. We don't have enough time. So what we have to do is start rearranging these things and figure out what's most important. 
And then we can say, well, these three things are the most important things that I need to get done today. So I'm going to do at least two out of those three. And if something happens, I run out of time, or something comes up, then I bump this one to the next day. And that's okay. You have to allow for that. What a lot of people, what happens with some people, over the course of time, something's going to come up. And we can get resentful because something got in front of our priorities. Or just understand that life is life and we can't plan it, right? Um, you know, we can, we can plan what we can, but something's going to come up. You know, a friend is going to need us. Uh, there's going to be a loss in the family. A family member is going to need us. Um, some, our car is going to break down. Uh, a tree is going to fall on the house. Whatever might happen, that's okay. The, the point of this process is to help us get things done in the time that we have so that we're not wasting it on those things that pull us this direction. So we can, we can take care of what we need to take care of. And then we're ahead of the game already. When those unexpected emergencies happen, we can react and know that we've done, we've done what we could already. And now we're just going to handle what we need to handle and then get back on course. All of this, all of this takes time. You're, it, it's a journey of discovery. It's going to take you a lot of time to figure out what the proper direction for you is. And that's okay. You can write down all of those priorities. Um, if, if you have 15 of them, write 15 down. When you do or don't get them done, go to the back sheet, go to the page behind it where we journal and write down where you were successful and where you weren't and how that made you feel. If you do that process every day, you will learn something about yourself and where you put your time and energy. And that is a core point of this process, is understanding how what we do impacts us, how it drains us, how it, how it gives us energy. And if you're trying to do 15 priorities in a day, then none of them are priorities and you're, you're not properly prioritizing. I'm sorry, you're not. That's not prioritizing. That's just doing a bunch of stuff. You know, you have to figure out what your priorities are, figure out where you ultimately want to go, you have to have goals and you have to have your values that you want to adhere to. And this journey will help you figure those things out. You just have to get through the process and get and keep doing the process. We want you to get to this place. And that involves kind of steering this big blobby ship, right? There's this, this big blob of life right here, steering it in the right direction. And a lot of times we have bad habits, we have bad relationships, and we have just a lot of stuff that we feel we need to do. And letting go of that is incredibly hard. And sometimes it's just a matter of finding 15 minutes a day. 15 minutes a day. I, I, I spoke with someone recently who 15 minutes per day cleaned up her upstairs in her house, and that's one hour every four days, and her house looks completely different now. That's the difference this, this process can make for you. If you just inject 15 minutes. What's 15 minutes? You know, you, you didn't watch 15 minutes of TV. You didn't spend 15 minutes on your phone. You woke up 15 minutes earlier. And you just got that little thing done. And that little thing can be your only priority. You know, work can just be, you know, I'm going to work. I have no control there. That happens. There are people that have those kinds of jobs. Maybe your priority could be bringing a, a positive attitude or, you know, helping somebody else out at work. Maybe you don't want to do that and you just want to keep it completely personal. That's okay. And then your priority is every morning I'm going to read for 15 minutes. And I'm going to exercise for 30 minutes. Maybe that's your only priority. Nobody is judging you on this. Nobody's grading. The only person that is looking at this is you. And you decide how you did. Don't do it with judgment. Don't do it with criticism. Just look at it. Observe it. How did it make you feel? How can I do better tomorrow? Small steps, big results is our motto at the beginning of every book. And it's because we take those small steps every day. And when you take small steps positively every day, you end up going like this. It's when we go like this and then stop, and then we go like this and we stop, and go like this and we stop. That's not what we want to do because you're just going down. Even if you feel good in moments, and then when you get like a little bit of success and you go down, it's not taking you anywhere. We want to get up here. And the way to do that is to be consistent, 
and make small progress every day. So um, I can answer any questions. If anybody has any questions, um, go ahead and pop them in there in the comment section and I will help you out with that. Um, you know, I think that with, with, with this whole process, um, it's, it's that pressure that people feel that we want to try to avoid. It's that press, pressure that the process, um, you know, they don't want to do it wrong or that they feel like they need to do more. Uh, you only need to do what you feel you need to do. You know, if, if you're, if you are, you know, if you feel you're here and your goal is to get up here, you can't go like this, right? We need to go this way. You can try to go this way, but it's easier to go this way. So I say, take a small step, small step every day. Build healthier, healthier habits every day. And eventually you're going to get to about here and you're going to look back and say, wow, I made it really far. I have a lot more to go. And as long as I keep up the progress I'm making, I'm going to be fine. So in the very beginning, if you're just starting out with Define My Day, maybe your priority is to come up with one priority every day. Maybe your priority is just to, just to do one small thing every day. That's okay. If you're already a really high achiever and you want to get to that next level, sure, maybe you have, maybe you feel you have a ton of priorities. I challenge you to look at all your priorities and come up with just a couple. Those things that are really going to make a change in your life. You've heard of the 80-20 rule, right? 80% of the results come from 20% of the effort or 20% of the things that we can do. What's that 20% for you? What's that one or what are those one or two or maybe three things that you can do today that's going to get you here? The more you analyze that, the more clearer it gets. And you get there instead of there. All right, so I'm going to come over here and see if there's any comments or questions. Let's see what we have going on. All right. Uh, let's see. Kathy, thanks for always motivating me to get back on track. I tend to beat myself up. If I don't use define my day for a day or two, and I just think I maybe need to cut back on my priorities like you suggest. Um, yes, you know, I think that I think that concept of time blocking is uh, incredibly helpful. I think, you know, even for me, so I've been in a group uh, of people that um, we all decided to start time blocking last week. And if you look at my calendar, it looks crazy obsessive. But in reality, by blocking off my time that way, I actually did less and I, it, I'm not that I did less. I actually accomplished more, but I did less activity and I had much less bouncing around in my brain because I, when you, when you plan it all out like that and you understand that you don't have as much time as you think you do, you, you're allowed, you know, you allow yourself to let it go. You know, like it's, it's unreasonable for me to think that I can get all of this stuff done. So you let it go, and if it's on your calendar for a couple of days later, then uh, you know it's there, and you will eventually get to it. Um, and that kind of puts your mind at ease, uh, in it, and it makes the process much more digestible and makes your day much more digestible. So uh, I'm, I'm glad this helped you out. Um, thank you for commenting. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, if you have any other questions, uh, even after this video is over, I'm happy to help. Uh, you're welcome to post it in the group or private message us or even write on this post. We'll always come back to it. Um, you know, I, this process is not, I, you know, I don't want to say it's easy, right? It's not complicated. Uh, it's meant to be quick in and out, but it, it, it does take um, effort, you know, it, and it's so it's, it's it, it almost seems like it shouldn't be as hard as it is, but just the process of trying to be focused and intent is actually hard. Um, and I, I think it's only the, uh, the human mind kind of makes us um, a little, uh, I don't know, it adds more to it than needs to be added. And I've seen that in myself. Um, Kathy, you've gotten more structure with the use of the ideal day since you started to find my day two months ago. 
an ideal day is one of those things that we're going to talk about in a future video. Um, ideal day, just I'll put it out, out there briefly for anybody that's watching. Ideal day is just that basic plan that we want for our day. It's the, our day if everything went perfectly for us, perfectly for us. Um, and, uh, you know, my ideal day, I don't know that I've ever hit it perfectly, right? You know, for me, you know, I want two hours in the morning of solid, like, learning and growth time. Uh, I have priority time that I try to fit everything into. Um, you know, it's nice when you can start to get things to fit into those boxes, but it's hard to do. So, so but I'm glad you're getting there. Uh, Barb says, I uh, came in late, so you might have addressed this. Uh, there is freedom in changing the categories, too. For instance, I've changed personal to spiritual professional to financial, health to personal, relationship to family. Yeah, you know, um, it requires a little bit of writing, but I think that you can do, you know, that can be synonymous too. Like personal can be spiritual, um, you know, because being spiritual is a, a personal thing. Um, and professional, if you don't, if you're, if you're retired, you're not going to have a professional goal. But by changing it to financial, you're, you're getting... Um, you're getting that uh, same sort of uh, category for you. So yeah, I think that works. There was somebody, I'm trying to think now, you just reminded me, somebody tried to change something in the book that I disagreed with, and I can't remember what that was. But no, yours, yours works. Um, good. I'm just looking, making sure there's nothing else I missed here. Yeah, I've seen, um, you know, I think the, the main point with Define My Day um, is that it's meant to be flexible. Uh, it's not meant to be rigid that, that we need to fill in every line. Um, you know, one person's goals might be completely different than another one. Somebody's health goal might be to you know, lose two pounds in a month. Somebody else's health goal might be to run a marathon. Um, you know, that might not even be a health goal for one person, you know, that runs three marathons a month. You know, it just, it just depends. You know, it's all, it's all on a sliding scale. The goal is just to make, you know, you're not comparing yourself to anybody but, uh, you know, who you were yesterday. And you're just sort of trying to move forward. And we're all going through that process. We're all trying to figure this thing out, right? And not to find my day, but life. Um, I thought I saw a comment, but do I not have one? Okay, so um, if nobody has any other questions, then I'm going to hop off. I uh, thank you guys for joining me, um, and uh, we're going to do another one of these very soon. Uh, what I do want to do is we're going to give out a, um, I'm going to give out a free Define My Day book to somebody that made a comment on here. So it's Kathy and Barb are the two that made a comment. If anybody else wants to pop their name up there. Um, I'm going to give you guys a free Define My Day book. You can pick what color you want and we'll get it out to you um, in the mail this week. Uh, so if anybody's watching and has not made a comment yet, let me know and then we're going to randomly pick somebody here in the next minute or two. Kathy, you're welcome. Right, you guys get to drink, watch me drink water until uh, you guys get your comments and I'll give you a minute. All right, now I know I'm missing comments because I saw one come up. Somebody posted a comment about having their own business and it popped up on my screen and now it's gone. Holly Ann, now I see a comment. Thank you. I appreciate that, guys. Ladies. Um, yeah, for some reason, I'm not seeing... Holly, I think it's your comment. Maybe I didn't see. If you made a comment about owning a business, um, I saw it pop up on the screen, but it's not showing up on the feed here. I'm going to go back out and come back in.
It's so odd. Technology. Yeah, that's what happened. I came back in, Holly, and now I see them. Okay. So we're... All right, so Holly says, you have your own online business that I run out of my home. I use to find my day and can prioritize pretty well. However, when outside forces take me away from my goal, it really throws me and it's hard to get back on track. I take care of my elderly parents, and something always seems to come up. Yep. Uh, and that's fine, I understand, but I could use some advice on how to get back on track when things settle down. I always feel, I always end up feeling frazzled and overwhelmed. So, and your other comment. Yep, okay, so same thing. All right. Okay, so, I, from, I look at that, like that process of rolling back around after you've had um, those experience of being pulled out of the zone, right? Um, I've struggled with it on my own, and I know a lot of people struggle with it when it comes to vacations, family loss, illness. Um, even for me, like my father was in town this past weekend. I was ended up being sick on Friday, so for four days I was just out of it, you know? And yesterday afternoon, trying to get back into it, um, it just, I, it wasn't clicking, right? And so for me to set things up so that I get that momentum back, uh, there's two things. Number one, I think we need to do our best to not drop our healthy habits. Even if we get out of the habit of focusing on our priorities when those things happen, I think we try to need, we need to try to keep taking care of ourselves. A lot of times, you know, when we go on vacation, we take a vacation from everything, from, you know, exercise, from waking up at a certain time, from reading, uh, educating ourselves, eating well, if I didn't say that already. And then, you know, not only did we take a vacation, but then we get back and we just feel like out of it and gross, you know. Um, and I think we need to we need to make sure we can't kind of take our habits wherever we go. Um, so I've been working on that. It's not easy. Uh, but I know I t I've taken a couple business trips this year and I've tried, I've really tried hard to maintain my, my healthy habits and my disciplines on those trips. Hasn't always worked out the, as well as I would like, but I think we just need to keep making that effort. And then as far as getting back on board once we get back, you know, the, it's, it's about reorganizing our mind because I think when we sit down we're not, you know, for me, if I sit down at my desk, I might have a pile of mail. I have a bunch of emails. I have things that I am in the habit of checking every day that I haven't checked. Um, I have maybe a phone calls to return. And it's just this all this big lump of stuff that needs to be just, just pulled apart. You know, it's this big ball that needs to be pulled apart. And for me, yesterday, uh, I was going through this. And I just had to pick something to do to get momentum. And um, I felt like my office was kind of a wreck. You know, I had stuff on the floor and my desk was a little bit of a mess. And I had a stack of mail that either needed to be thrown away or filed. And so what I did was throw on some music. And I scheduled myself for two hours to clean my office. And I did nothing but that. And then when I was able to sit back down this morning, I was already ahead of the game, I felt. You know, I sat down in a clean space and I was able to start chipping away at what I had written down. Now, the other thing is to have a good plan, right? So if we take the time to time block, if you're coming back um, from a time when you're taking care of your parents or something pulled you off track, it's, you know, if you can write down, just spitball, create a big list of all the things you feel you need to do and then just sort them or number them however you need to do it as to what's most important. Make those most important ones your priorities. And I think this time blocking tool is incredibly effective. If you put your priority number one, which may be, you know, it may be sort through my email. You know, that that's not wouldn't be a priority of mine every day, but when we're just coming back, that might be it. Uh, could be returning phone calls. I think whatever you can do to get that sense of momentum, understanding that you're overwhelmed, understanding that you might not have the energy, that you're just there's just too much rattling around, whatever you can do to get moving. And it's that it's that sense of moving forward, it's that sense of action that is going to carry you forward 
And once you start doing a couple of small things, then you can start tackling the bigger things. It's the one time I would say the small things are the things we need to do, right? You know, it's, it's almost like the to-do list items kind of get us that momentum we need to shift gears to then get into the really important stuff. Um, I always put to-do list items to the back of the line. And um, it's when in this situation where I flip that and start just, just doing anything to get me moving. So to-do list the items start becoming like, okay, I'll just do these couple of things, get a couple of small wins, and then build that momentum up. And as I get rolling, hit the bigger stuff. Good. All right. Um, all right. So let me, we have a total of, any comments? My comments. We have a total of 24 comments. So I'm going to go to the Google random number generator. And we are going to, do a maximum round of 24 comments, and we're going to pick a number. Number 15, so the 15th comment. Oh, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15 is Barb Hurley. Month five for you, and everything looks different than month one. Barb, I didn't see that comment before, but I'm glad I saw it now. Barb, you won your uh, free Define My Day book. You're on month five, um, and that's awesome. And uh, so what's different? I, that, I'm interested in that. If you're still here, um, what's different between month one and month five? Because there's a lot of growth that happens in those five months. I would love to hear what you what's changed for you. So I'll give you a, a minute to respond because I know there's a delay in this video. So... Let me know. Uh, let me know what that difference is for you, if you can. And you'll have to let me know what color you want. If you met Facebook message us, let us know what color you want. We'll send that out to you. Also, while, um, while we're waiting for Barb, if anybody else has a comment or a question that you'd like to see answered uh, in the future, in a future video, let me know. Um, I would like to make sure that these all stay relevant for what you need uh, to do this better. Um, you know, the, the Define My Day is a tool. Um, I need to get you more help in how to use it properly. And uh, the best way to do that is for you guys to uh, ask me the questions that you have and, and I can answer them for you. Um, Barb says, the first thing that comes to mind that I abandoned is my ideal day. So instead I've listed there my advanced decisions. Okay, good. And uh, you work overnight, 12 hours, so ideal day doesn't work very well for you. I got you. Uh, there, you know, there's something else that I've seen somebody do a little hack that I uh, heard about last week was to save all of their to-do list items for Friday. So they do priorities Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and everything that shows up during the week that looks like a to-do list item, they shove it to Friday. And then Friday is just all to-do list things. You know, when you're low on energy, maybe you don't want to focus on anything. Um, you know, you just kind of want to have that busy work stuff you want to do, and then you can get out of work on time. So, you know, all the big things happen early in the week, and then Friday, boom, there you go. You're just kind of on autopilot. I kind of like that. I, I'm going to try that myself, I think. Some advanced decisions are no phone until I've had my sit down with God. Good for you. Good for you. So that's what I use the today I get to enjoy thing part for on the, the, the one page. On the daily page, 
uh, today I will today I get to enjoy uh, I use that as a way to bargain with myself so that um, you know if I don't if I don't accomplish priority number one or whatever I decide I might say even all three if I don't accomplish these then I don't get to enjoy that so if today I get to enjoy a half an hour of TV or a beer or the uh, you know whatever I might want to do um, I don't get to if I don't finish these things so it's a little extra motivation so I like yours you're using the same sort of thing um, you know no phone until you sit down with God it's great uh, so yeah so the priority on Friday uh, is their to-do list item you know tackle the to-do list or whatever that might be or maybe they graduate to-do list items as you know two priorities you know like I mean, I don't know what a to-do list priority might be, but like, just, let's just say that, you know, the laundry is built up all week or the housework is built up all week. You know, if, you know, you've been at work all day, um, you know, or, or you've had other things and, you know, priority number one might, you know, I would never put laundry on a priority list, but by the end of the week, if you want to say, you know, it's on the to-do list there, grocery shopping might be there. Uh, if it's things for work, like for me, uh, check, re reading my mail is not a real it's a to-do to -do list thing. It's not a priority. So, um, you know, on Friday, you know, mail might be priority number one. And then it might be, task one might be sort, uh, throw away, pay bills, like something like that. Um, but it's, it, you know, it, it's completely different for whatever your situation might be. It might be return phone calls or, uh, you know, um, you know, it might, I don't know what it could be. You know, it could be even going through old emails. Or something it just depends on, on what you might have going on yeah in the grid page you have weekly disciplines like things like cleaning yep absolutely for a long time I was tracking macros on that page I would, I would uh, draw in um, uh, the boxes of the colors like color, color coordinated I would use um, I don't have them here but different colored pens and I would uh, color the boxes uh, like red for meat uh, green for vegetables purple for fruit and then I would write down how many servings I had of each one through the day and then total them up. Um, and that worked pretty well for me. I don't do that anymore since we added the, um, the new weekly page. Um, so at the beginning of each week now, we have, where are you? Uh, we have this page. And so now I pre-plan my meals here and keep track of my calories each day here. Uh, a lot of people have been doing that on this page. Or you can pre-plan your priorities. It's sort of up to you. Um, good. Well, uh, Barb, I'm going to close this out. Uh, but Barb, get me your color that you would like for your new book. And we will get that out, out to you as soon as possible. Uh, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. And uh, we will do another one of these videos very soon. Uh, I hope you can define your day to define your life. Remember, we want to make go from here to here, right? We want to make that much smaller. And so we can be streamlined toward where we want to go in life. So take care. Thank you for joining me. And I will talk to you again very soon. Bye.